Hello, I am David Silber speaking for the Drisha Institute. We are presenting a series of podcasts on prayer and nigun, prayer and melody, focusing on the prayers of the high holidays of the Yamim Noraim. As I mentioned in the previous podcast, the focus on Rosh Hashanah is the kingship of heaven, Malchut, the blessing that we recite over and over again on Rosh Hashanah, speaks of God as king of the whole world, Melch HaKol Aretz. And it's very interesting that the standard prayer service and all the services that we have come out of the standard service. The standard service, the everyday service, the festival service, has two main components. One is the recitation of the Shema, together with, with its attendant blessings, and the other is the silent prayer, the Amidah. Rosh Hashanah is no different in that respect. Leading up to the recitation of the Shema are what is known as Psuke de Zimra, verses of praise. They are recited typically every day and a more expanded version on Shabbat and the festivals. But it's interesting, where does the prayer leader begin? So on Shabbat, the prayer leader begins towards the end of this section of Psukei de Zimra with Shochein Ad. On the festivals, the prayer leader begins with the words, Ha'el betat sumot uzecha. But on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the prayer leader begins with the word Hamelech, the king. And there's a practice, actually, that the one leading the service says the word Hamelech from their seat and then walk towards walk towards the place where they will be leading the service. Hamelech. So Rosh Hashanah, we say in the very beginning, Hamelech, it's a day of God's kingship. Let's listen to an igun coming out of the world of Mudgets, played by Andy Statman, which reflects, I would say, the coronation of the king. It's a regal nigun.
in hearing this nigun, one has the sense that the king is approaching. The king is coming to our space. And uh, it's important, I think, to reflect upon what that means. What does it mean to say that we are enthroning God on Rosh Hashanah? Part of it has to do with seeing ourselves as living in God's world. We typically see the world in which we inhabit as our world. But what would it mean to think of ourselves as strangers and sojourners in God's world, put here to serve, rather as put here to enjoy or to take, having a particular task in this world in service of God? And that's what Rosh Hashanah invites us to do. It invites us to see ourselves and our world differently. We are living in the presence of the king, and the majestic king demands that the servants serve the king. The king is a just king, the king is a righteous king, and our job is to serve the king and to do the king's bidding. The service of Rosh Hashanah, the morning service, has additional, what are known as piyutim, additional poems. And typically during the rest of the year, most people never say these kinds of poems, don't recite them, but on Rosh Hashanah we do. And the theme, specifically of course on Rosh Hashanah, is God's kingship. So for example, in the morning service, there's a poem whose refrain is, Hashem Melech, Hashem Morach, Hashem Yimroch, Yoram Va'ed, God has been the king, is the king, will be the king forever. And that's the refrain. And there are various, uh, the composition has various praises of God, descriptions of God. And again, it reinforces the idea that Rosh Hashanah is a day of enthronement. There's a, um, another piyut that ends with the refrain, May the high king, the melech el yon, the highest king, reign forever. And again, this reinforces, through our chanting and through our singing, reinforces the idea that we stand in the presence of the king, that we are living in God's world, and that we are called to serve, that living in this world should be a life of service, each one, of course, determining what they are called to do. We don't know what the other person is called to do. We have a difficult time figuring out, typically, what we're called to do. But in any event... This is the idea of kingship. And we sing or we chant these uh, poems. So now let's listen to two different compositions that reflect the spirit of these piyutim. One could call them waltzes. I'm not sure they're precisely waltzes. They're a little bit different. But these are played by Abaye. Uh, two different waltzes. Once again, the first one comes out of the world of mudgets. And the second, I'm not sure where it comes out of. It could be Majits as well. It could be a different Hasidic group.
Okay, that first waltz, interesting, it's in a major key. It's a kind of exuberant waltz, very positive. The king is here. Long live the king. And now we come to a second waltz coming out of the world of mudgets, and that's different. That is in a minor key, which is typical of Hasidic music, and evokes a completely different feel to it. The king may be here, but the king is not fully the king. The king is not recognized as king. We pray that someday the world will come to recognize the king and act accordingly, but we're not there yet.
the Nusach of Rosh Hashanah, the chant of Rosh Hashanah, the melody, is distinctive. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, have their own distinctive chant. And some of the tunes actually come out of the regular Nusach. Sometimes the songs are not connected to the Nusach, and sometimes it comes out of the Nusach. Here's a tune for the words Mechalkel Chayim Bechesed. Mechalkel Chayim Bechesed is in, the, in every single Amidah. It talks about the God who sustains the world, who heals the sick, who supports those that are falling, so Mech Nofrim, Rofei Chorim, who frees up those that are bound. And this is a tune, actually, that I learned from uh, Dr. Chaim Kranzler, who actually led the Drisha service for many years. And I asked him, where is this tune from? And his answer was, he doesn't know. He learned it from a fellow that he met many, many years ago, and he sang it ever since. I, myself, when I read the service, sing the same tune. It's an interesting tune, and it sort of comes out of the Nusach. So let's listen to Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed coming out of the Nusach of Rosh Hashanah. On behalf of Drisha Institute, thank you for listening. There will be a total of six podcasts, three on Rosh Hashanah, three on Yom Kippur. The next podcast, the third podcast, will be continued with the service of Rosh Hashanah. We hope that you enjoy the podcasts and find them helpful as we move towards Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur.